know who that person is? This one. This one. This is this is me. That one is a man. <laughs> Some of you may ask yourself, you know, uh, a couple of things. Anger is wearing a white coat. What is she doing there with Dr. Maria? This picture was in 2013 in South Sudan. Uh, you know, the crisis was really bad. And since Anger and I, Anger has a nursing background, so she put on her, her night coat. That's a nurse. And I'm the doctor, and we went looking for the wounded. And uh, there were a lot of things that. We saw that in the picture here, none of us is happy. Okay? We look very stressed, no smile. So mental health, as we will see here, you know, the background that we came from was the amount of wars of next. <coughs> the amount of wars that we have gone through, it is something that uh, you know, is following us wherever we go. So, uh, this is the disclaimer. This is uh, a public discussion about women's mental health. So, where we encourage active participation, uh, we hope that when you are sharing, you be mindful that whatever you share for personal information or family health information, is at your own risk. So you can give an examples, you can give names if you want, but know that we cannot control that. Uh, things can go out, so the, the element of confidentiality would not uh, work that way. Uh, no conflict of interest for me to, to declare, so you know, I don't have any hidden agenda to promote by doing this rather than serving my community. So this is very important. So I'm not paid to speak or give a little bit something on the table to say what suits uh, that with that executive. <laughs> yeah. um, some of the uh, you know the topics that we will discuss here may trigger people. So when people talk about mental health. Uh, you may hear a story that reminds you of something that happened to you in the past. And in the process, if that happens, it can set you in a bad mental health spot. If that is the case here, please, you can go outside of the room, but make sure that, you know, you give us a thumbs up to know that you're okay. And after this presentation, if you feel like you need to talk to someone, you need to reach out, you can talk to, to me. I'm not a counselor, but I can try my best. But also there are resources. You can call 211 and you can get mental health support. There are also uh, nationwide numbers that you can use. Don't call 911. <laughs> Next. So why, why are we so much susceptible to, uh, to mental health problems, maybe more far so than you know those native population that we have found here, like the white people, the rest of the Canadian. The immigrant population have some mental health issues, and these mental health issues have two factors in it. There are pre-migration factors, and then there are post-migration factors. So pre-migration are things that have happened to us before we came to this beautiful country. Many of us have come you know, from refugee camps, from other countries as refugees, as immigrants, and we settled here in the place that we call home. But there were things that were happening to us. So psychological and physical trauma due to war plays a big role. That is exposure to a stress. Sometimes it can be acute, like you know, when you are in combat 
I went and here and I were uh, in Juba in 2013. From that picture that I showed you, actually, to Sarangar, when we went to Mangadin, she started crying. She was broken down. And guess what she told me? She said, Dr. Mawil, you already have your children. What about me? Are you, going, are you coming to kill me? Because the place was like a ghost town. So, what I want to emphasize here is, you know, you can be subject to acute stress, you can be subject to chronic stress. And those chronic things that come happen in our life, like war, you know, 21 year long civil war, has actually taken us to the spot that we came here carrying a lot of baggage. Some of them we know, we are aware of some of them, you're not even aware that has affected you. You know, you might think that you're tough, uh, you're not affected by what happens, but it does affect you. And that's a free migration factor. So if we were subjected to torture, sexual abuse, slavery, etc., you will be traumatized. Not only you, even if, you know, there are some of your family members, relatives, or neighbors, still, or even a complete stranger, seeing somebody get killed can traumatize you. Um, to make matters worse, there are no health services, so to speak. So most of us, when we come here, actually I added this point because I was going to talk about physical health as well. And the reason I put this one is when we don't have health services like we have in South Sudan, most of us are not even aware that they, they, they were suffering from a mental health issue until they see a professional and then they are told, oh, you have this, this, this. I think there are some diagnoses that uh, some of you might not have heard of until you came to Canada here. So, lack of health services and lack of health education plays a big role. Uh, so, what I want to emphasize here, we are not equipped. You know, we came, we are suffering, we don't even know what we are suffering from, and then we are put in this situation, whereby, you know, you might think what you are doing is healthy, but it is not. You might have mental health problem, but you are in denial. Maybe you're not seeking help, not talking to anybody. Nobody will know. Um, there are taboos that are related to mental health. You know, and I think one of these is, like we are, we are here now, uh, South Sudanese community in Calgary is a huge community. I'm sure if we are talking about something else, we would be, the room would be full. But because we are talking about mental health, there are things that we have in mind as South Sudanese about mental health. Very quick insult. Lozol there is a temat. Ma fi hadi fairini yule kita ya ita majinun or into that family talk majanin and so forth. So people are shocked. They don't they don't even talk about mental health or they don't disclose for fear that that thing can be used against them by the community. So that need to change, Ajama. Because without talking about mental health, you can never be okay. I remember when I went to University of Calgary a couple of months ago, Dr. Raquel was there. And uh, you know, one of the ladies, she's, she came and greeted me, oh, Dr. Moyen, how are you? I said, I'm doing good. Dr. Moyen, Dr. Moyen, <laughs> so I said, I said, yes, Dad, it is good that I'm here. We are talking about mental health, so this is a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So, so just, just look at this. You know, somebody can come out of blue. They might have heard something. So people are very reserved. Sometimes when you go and complain to somebody that you know you love, they may even shut you down. Be strong. You, you know, you're feeling depressed. 
But we don't, we don't acknowledge those kind of sufferings. And therefore, we're not open to ourselves to talk honestly. So women share a burden. You know, women care for their families. They care for the community as a whole. Sometimes, you know, the atrocities of war are more pronounced on women. They are the ones losing their husbands in war. They're losing their children. And they, they have to take care of everybody. So in the process, sometimes they forget themselves and they fall back to the mental health. Um, next. So, what happened when we came here? So, can somebody tell me what are some of the challenges? You can go back to this slide. Let me just give them a little bit of preview here. <laughs> what do you think are some of the problems that we face while we are here in Canada that make us susceptible to mental health? Any? Yes? Financial. Financial. Hey, stress about finances. You know, the, the money, now it is the end of the month. You know, the mortgage has to be paid, the rent has to be paid, food. It is Christmas and New Year time. You're getting millions of phone calls from back home. Could as well they had to eat. So financial stress, yes? A lack of social life. Lack of social life. Can you explain what you mean by that? Um, <laughs> where, where we come from, you're constantly around people, even in, in the camp. You're around people, you eat with people, you laugh with people, and then you end up in a country where you don't even know who's your neighbor. It affects you mentally. Social connections. Yeah. You know, social connections are lost. And when, when we say somebody is healthy, you know, health, health is actually defined as a state of complete mental physical and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So you don't have to be sick to be unhealthy. If you have lost social connections, like Dr. Raquel was saying, you are actually sick. And South Sudanese isolation is not our thing, you know. Even back home, people sit together, they eat together, some people cannot even eat if they are eating alone. But here now, who is all that for you, all of town, you know? Even family at home, it's very hard to sit on the same table to have a dinner and have a conversation because everybody's running here and there. So lots of social connections. Any, uh, anyone else? Okay. Culture shock. Culture shock. Cultural shock, okay, we'll come to that. Yeah, yeah I think we have an uh, issue too for uh, the translation. Like when we came from the war, yes, and uh, from refugees can we just come here. When we are here, we didn't know that we already already have a mental health because uh, we saw that war, and I think that one we carried here, and then this is is the one factor too because we did not get to take care of our first. Yes. And we just jump into this culture and we are in different directions. Yes. Like we just came in, but we don't know. We are here right now. What are we going to do? Is that war affect us? And then we didn't know. And then we already affected from all those uh, families, like uh, men and women. Yes. And when we are kids, and then they involve. We don't know that we already involved and that's what we have that situation like everybody eating in its own room, everybody going to the community, you just go to the meeting and you go to church and you leave your kid and you, you go to community meeting, you leave them alone. You don't know that that meeting needs those people to hear why we are here. Thank you very much. That that is a very, very good uh, point. You know, we, we came here 
like I said before, we came on the backdrop of a protracted civil war, 21 years of civil war. Some even were born, like myself, I was born, you know, in the war, during the Addis Ababa agreement, just before the Addis Ababa agreement was signed. There are some people that were born in war, grew up in war, and even here, you know, we, we still, like what our sister has said, can fall into two categories. It can fall into pre-migration, because it's a war that we brought with us, but also it can be post-migration as well, simply because if you have unresolved things from your past, you are dealing with, and you are here with those, without seeking help, more likely it will catch up with you, and it will affect you. So thank you very much for, for sharing that. And more importantly, our sister had mentioned that, you know what? We need to bring others, you know, bring, bring our younger daughters, you know, uh, community members that need to hear this. Not only just us as adults, like what I said before in the opening remarks is that the research has shown that those immigrants like us who first came here, we are actually less likely affected psychologically than our kids that we, we brought here or the one that we are going to have here. You know, the second generation is worse than the first generation, and we have we've seen that. You know, it is something that we cannot deny uh, in our midst now, the crisis that we are passing through with our families and all that. So thank you. Okay, one more comment and then, yeah. Uh, equal opportunity between men and women is something that can cause a mental problem. Because back home, we know our system is one way. And when it came here, you might see that what you are doing as a man would not be sufficient to the idea of the host that is accommodating us. So that becomes a problem. Uh, on the other hand, it could be an advantage that a woman may think this is something that is workable. That is how these people frame their system. But at the same time, it's causing a conflict in our living at in home. society at home, yeah. Because we will be rivaling on something that we did not actually started or produced in our life. So having a different lifestyle is more way, way uh, that can cause mental health. Okay, um, can you advance? Okay, post migration, you guys talk about some of the factors actually. Yeah. And adjustment to new culture and new way of living. So we came here, we have our culture, we have our, but we have to adapt. You know, and that is not an easy thing. Like Brother Mario said, uh, what I can deduce from this is actually shifting role, to prayer with our adore. Uh, back home in South Sudan, you know, male is the one that goes out, she works, bring the food home, and the woman is taking care of uh, the kids in the house. This is not the case here. You know, both of you are going to work, uh, the, the role, sometimes even a woman can have a higher income than the man. But the man wants to control the, the money. <laughs> so there, from there, the conflict can arise. Or even just feeling that you are inferior. You know, it can create a tension that your paycheck is not equal. This woman is making too much money, but sure is that she will kick me out. So you create a problem there. And for the, for the women, say for example, if they get a better job, how would they please the men? To remove themselves? And of course that is not, is not uh, right. So shifting role, that has led to this point here, which I've said family breakdown and high rate of divorce and separation. We the South Sudanese have very high rate of divorce and separation much more than Kawajat, you know? And uh, this is not a surprise, because like I said, we came with a lot of pre-migration 
And then the post-migration, as you can see here, adjustment to new culture. And then there is this concept, it's a new concept, it's called acculturation. This is where the, when the immigrant is actually trying to reconcile between the two cultures, the, the host country culture, we want to act like Canadian, but at the same time also we want to act like, like South Sudanese. And you can see how this thing, it becomes very difficult. Uh, trying to fit your culture into another culture. Very stressful. So that process is fulfilled when you can actually navigate easily. You act like you. You do things that are appropriate for your culture. When you go to Kawajat, you act like Kawajat. You know how to differentiate between the two. You know, and you can do it comfortably without stressing you out. That is the aim. But you are going to face problems if you want to act purely like you are Hawaii, or if you want to act purely like you are Hindu. So that process is there. Uh, feminism is the concept that, you know, we as South Sudanese culturally, we put our families' interests more you know, to the front than our own interests. And women, women do this a lot. Men, men do it also. Uh, so fe uh, feminism refers to the value and importance of family over the individual in many cultures. A family can be a source of stress, can produce mental health. It can also be a source of support. Okay. So let us not forget that, you know, how can a family be a source of uh, mental health stress? Any example? If you are unable to control uh, the system, like if kids are out of your hand, you are mm -hmm. unable to raise them, to bring them down, so that you see successfully they are going through this in their own life. It is stressful. Uh, also, when you are facing financial burden, that you are unable to sufficient these children of their needs, even a small thing, you cannot, you cannot Yes, afford. so for your immediate family, like our kids here, if you are not able to provide, you will be stressful. And also having a family can be a source of support for you. Uh, but also, just think about somebody giving you a phone call from South Sudan. Oh, uh, court. What is going on? That's the person asking about a baby. You know, when you are even thinking here, how are you going to take care of the kids that you have? Because one of the things that we had coming here, uh, we thought that we left our problems back. We came to a safe place, we came to the first world, life is perfect. But then when you are faced with those challenges, you know, even some people don't even know that here in Calgary, you know, somebody can spend a night hungry. You know, so things are not rosy for us that we have come here and we, you know we have surpassed this. For our family back home, they will you know they will interfere, or even here, they may they may say, oh you know what you have to do this, you have to run your life like this. Madam Dr. Maluda the latter, she's not listening to the family, uh, or you know what, is the woman is controlling you so that you're not sending us money. And now there is a problem between your family and the woman or your wife, and before we know, there is problems in the family. That is just an example. Uh, male reverse migration. You know, after signing of the CPA, a lot of men, myself included, we went back home, and we left behind our women taking care of the children by themselves, and. That fact of sin, you know, when you factor in with poverty, education and career challenges, 
how, how is that woman equipped even to take care of the kids if she didn't even go to school? What kind of job is she going to do to take care of five, six children by her own? Sometimes it is a major stress. Some women are doing two, three shifts. Lack of sleep, lack of, you know, social life, like you said. People don't even have social life. Because where, where, where will you get time when you're working seven days a week? So those are you know, some of the background factors. Uh, next. So women mental health, um, women have significantly higher rate of anxiety disorder and depression compared to men. There is there are some things that also are more in men. But this uh, I presented this slide actually when thinking in mind that it is for women only. So women have high frequency of depression and anxiety. Uh, some disorders are unique to women. So something like you know mood changes. Uh, when, when a woman is passing through a period of hormonal changes, you know, yeah, welcome, welcome, please have a seat. Uh, Some disorders are more unique to women, like postpartum depression. Uh, that happened when a, a woman has a baby. Okay? Postpartum psychosis also happens after a baby is born. Mood changes around period. You know, uh, the premenstrual syndrome, or PMS. A lot of people know about that. You know, when a woman is cranky, they just say, oh, you know what? Maybe it's uh, that time of the month. And if you are if you are smart enough, you will know when the mood changes around your house. You know, that, that is a skill that also you can just avoid confrontation. Because what is happening here is mood swings or mood changes related to hormonal changes in the body that women cannot have. They better have a period, and period comes with, you know, some, some people do, some people don't. Uh, the same thing for older women that are going through menopause, they, they can also go through mood swings. You know, people will be like, oh, you know what, Flana, they're kind of crazy. I think these days she's acting like so crazy. What is going on? Well, maybe it is, you know, she's going through that. Um, immigrant women suffer more from post-traumatic stress disorder compared to non-immigrant. And for the reason that I've said, like exposure to war, etc. Uh, South Sudanese girls are forced into marriage as young as 14, even sometimes younger than that. You guys know about it. And this, you know, it leads into a lot of problems. Not only cutting the education, but also, you know, you have trauma. Just imagine having a 13 year old or 14 year old and she's taken Aluma or Zafaf and what, what, what. It's traumatizing to them, you know, to the girl. And now she's not going to school, she's not equipped. Uh, and the responsibilities, because being, being, being a wife, it's not, you know, it's not just a joke. You bring a kid and you just say, uh, you know what, it's a young or a bit. Yeah. So that is a, a really big factor that is happening in our community or in our society. That is pulling our women back. And a lot of the first, you know, like, most of the women that came to Canada uh, as first generation, they, they came, you know, some of them even came already. They have five, six, or seven kids, you know? And now they have to deal with, with all this, with raising the kids, you know, and, and you go to school, finish college, and you go up, and you know, you're coming home, you're running behind the bills. You have to run to go to work. You are coming home, uh, this thing is happening. So these are overwhelming. And if you are a child, or you know, in this case, of course it doesn't happen here in Canada, but back home in South Sudan, 
It has happened to some women, not all, but in our community here. And those women, they are held back from time, you know, from other duties, like pursuing education, career. And those are discussed. You know, you see yourself, you are the man of opportunity. And you cannot do anything because, you know, you don't have good education and your environment at home does not even help you to pursue things, go back to school, all this. Um, next. Uh, so what are the symptoms of mental health disorders in women? So persistent sadness of, or feeling of hopelessness is a big thing. Uh, noticeable changes in mood, energy level, or appetite. So you will find somebody either eating too much or you know, eating less. That is you know, a sign of mental health problem. Uh, feeling sad all the time, you know, pessimistic, uh, difficulty sleeping or falling asleep. So you go to bed and the mind is racing, you can't help it, so you can't sleep. Uh, misuse of alcohol, drugs, or both. So what happens is soothing, you know, and this one is very important because we as South Sudanese, we think like, you know, Mr. Labada, Marisa, well, uh, drugs is just confined to me. But we, we have to look at it a little bit different. And we start to challenge ourselves as a community. Because more women are thinking within our community. And sometimes you will not even notice that there's a problem unless things happen in the family or, you know, psychosocial issues. So that is a way of soothing it. Decrease energy or fatigue. So you feel like, you know, you wake up in the morning, but you feel like you never rested well, and you can't do anything. You know, I say, oh, it's not oh, you know what? I don't feel like doing it today. I don't want to have it. And maybe you are in bed for 24 hours, but you still feel tired because the brain. Um, so, then excessive fear or worry. So, worry is not a bad thing. You know, it, sometimes it can actually motivate you to do things. Um, you know, it can motivate you to be successful. So, for example, if you are worried about your grade to be exam, what are you going to do? You're going to study. That's, a, that's not a bad thing. That's actually a good type of stress. But, if you are, you know, worrying, sometimes you don't even know what is causing this, and you cannot sleep. Uh, this is what we call loop on hand. You know, it's a, it's a concept. You, you worry, sometimes you worry about something, right? And then you think about it, and you're like, hmm. They say, I had a day out of the day, why do I even get angry about a silly thing like this? And then you get angry, you know, more because why did I get angry about this small stuff? So you are in a vicious cycle, and your mind is, you know, doing that. Next, uh, seeing or hearing things. These are extreme things. Are people that have psychosis, schizophrenia? They can hear voices. They can hear things that are not there. See things that are not there. Uh, aches, headache. Digestive problems, anger and irritability, uh, social withdrawal. Uh, so you don't, you don't you don't get yourself involved in the activities that you enjoy. That is also another sign of mental health. Uh, thoughts or behavior that interfere with work, family, or so, so social life, and thoughts of death or suicide or suicide attempts. So these are in general the symptoms of mental health in women. Anybody else can Share something that we might have left out here. This idea. When when do you do you feel that you are stressed? Or you, you might have some moments that you feel not yourself. What happens? Okay. Um, you know, I, I tell you about myself. Sometimes I tend to isolate. If I'm feeling down, I don't want even to talk to anybody. 
for a while, just like late and you know, that is, you know, so it is different from person to person. So these are general symptoms. Next. Uh, we're going to talk about three mental health problems that are highly common uh, for us as migrants or as Africans. Uh, one of these is post-traumatic stress disorder. How many of you have heard of this term? PTSD. Okay. Good. So, what is PTSD? PTSD or, or post-traumatic stress disorder is a mental health problem that some people develop after experiencing or witnessing life-threatening events. So life-threatening events, you know, war, combat, it could be something as serious as, you know, being a car accident or getting raped, you know, or seeing someone being, being hurt or being killed. So it is not, when we talk about PTSD, what comes in mind, some people say, oh, then we should have another thing, I have heart. But no, right here we have different wars that we're fighting. And those things also can cause PTSD. So PTSD is actually more common in females than males. Uh, you know, this is opposite, because if you think about it, how many people, you know, who goes to the war in big numbers? It's, it's male, right? But females have that tendency of uh, is there anything good? No, no, no. I would say that this is referring to the side and somewhere the noise coming from. I think from it's the side. coming from the other side. There's, there's a party on the other yeah. side. Oh, yeah. There is, there is a party on the other side. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, what, what are the symptoms of PTSD? Uh, relieving the events. So, people get nightmares. And sometimes you can even feel like, oh, this thing is, is happening again. You can, you can even feel like you are in a war, you know, by seeing something. You have a fear. Yeah. You have a lot of fear. Too. Fear, yes, a lot, of, a lot of fear. Yeah. So, relieving the events, you can have flashbacks. Like now, this is a new year, right? There will be fireworks. Feel us. And they cannot afford to go to the fireworks. They will not come back home enjoying it. Now, Timo Pinyarja, Nepsiyadu Tawan. Why? Because when it go boom, 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 it's like, you know what, you are in the war again. And some people can even relieve that. Uh, avoiding situations that remind you of the event. So if there is something that reminds you of that particular thing, you know, say for example, somebody was raped, and they cannot even go to that close to that area. You know, they will try to avoid it by all means. So that is another symptom of uh, PTSD. Negative changes in belief and feelings. You know, to go uh, the world is a bad place. Hayaza to nas. Like NASCAR, what, what, you, you will start to reason that way. You don't see anything good. And you are feeling even your life is not worth it because, you know, why do you live in the world like this? So that is another core symptom. And then feeling keyed up. So somebody with PTSD have what you call a startle response. So for example, you come and you say, Oh, Anger, like I tap on her shoulder and from behind or I call her Anger, she'd be like, huh? You know, she's jumping. And sometimes even some of these people can even hurt you. You know, they can hurt you because the instinct is there to protect them. So they are on guard all the time. They're thinking something worse is going to happen to them and they must protect themselves. So it is advisable sometimes when approaching you have to make sure that you don't get into that kind of problem. Uh, next. Uh, I will skip this one, actually. Uh, OK, uh, go back a little bit. This is, this is uh, something called PCPTSD-5 screen for EMS 
uh, PC is primary care post-traumatic stress disorder 5 screen for uh, diagnosing and statistical manual of mental health 5, which is how the psychiatrists diagnose mental health illness. So there are things that, and this is a small exercise. Uh, the first part is here, sometimes things happen to people that are uh, unusually, especially uh, frightening, horrible, or traumatic. For example, serious accident or fire, physical or sexual assault, earthquake or flood, or war, seeing someone be killed or seriously injured, or having a loved one die through homicide or suicide. Has anything like this happened to you before? So, this is not a question for you guys, because we are not here to diagnose ourselves. Yeah. But, this is the first step. So, if you answer yes to this question, there is a possibility that you have a PTSD. Now, you go through the rest of the screening. This is screening, it's actually self-screening. It is different than what we do as doctors to make the diagnosis. But this is part of it as well. Next. So, then the next question would be, you know, do you get nightmares about the event, uh, thoughts about the event, you know, and, and these are not just the thoughts, uh, it is actually intrusive thoughts. These thoughts are getting into, it's like somebody putting those thoughts in your head. You want not think about it, but God, yeah, sir, husband, and so that is what we call intrusive thoughts. So those thoughts are there, you are thinking about the war every day, every day. And that is, uh, you know, if you say yes, that is another positive. If you say no, so for the first question, if you say no, you don't, that's it. You don't take the test. You pass. But if, if you said yes to the first question, then you have to go through this. So you try to avoid thinking about the event, or even go your own way to avoid those circumstances. Um, Fair concept to your guard, watchful, easily. You start with like what I just explained. Is that yes or no? You fell down, detached from people, activities, or your surroundings. And then feeling of guilt, or unable to stop blaming yourself or others for the events or any problems uh, the events may have caused. So if, if you say yes to three, there's a high probability that you have a PTSD, three or more, and you may need to see someone. It's just a take-home exercise, guys. So you can, you can do it at home, next. So is there a hope yet there is treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder? The treatment is actually come to teach you the skills to address your symptoms. Um, it also help you to think better about yourself or others. Learning ways to cope if any symptoms arise again and treating other problems often related to their PTSD. Like for example, somebody with PTSD can have depression. So if you treat depression, you can also help the symptoms of the PTSD. Next. 